Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Brother Glover coming to you again in part two of There's No Such Thing as a Sunday Morning Sermon. I'm going to call this There's No Such Thing as a Sunday Morning Sermon Feeding. Most, uh, in most cases, when pe people come together on a Sunday morning, the primary purpose is to hear a sermon from pastor. And that sermon is called They Are Feeding. And it's taken from Jesus Christ uh, telling Peter, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, yes, you know I love you, Jesus. And, Je and Jesus said, feed my lambs. Then they said, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. So actually, preachers actually think that the word feeding means preaching a sermon to them. And that is not true. There is no such thing as a Sunday morning sermon to the body of Christ by pastor apostle or anybody else. They did not come together to hear a sermon. Actually, <laughs> the body of Christ came together primarily to eat together and to fellowship together and to pray together and to minister to one another and to share their gifts and to share their food and to give to one another, confess their faults one to another, to bless one another, to encourage one another. Their primary purpose was not coming together to hear a sermon from pastor or anybody else. Yes, they even taught. Somebody had a teaching in the body of Christ. Somebody had a revelation. Somebody had a prophecy. Somebody had a tongue, interpretation of tongues. That's found in 1 Corinthians 11, chapter 12, 13, and 14, Acts 2. There are many chapters in the Bible that deals with the body of Christ coming together. But what happened is that a lot of preachers focus on Acts 20, verse 7, and make that a primary scripture to try to get you to, to see that your purpose in coming together is to Hear a preach sermon from a preacher. It is not true. Acts 20 verse 7 King James Version says, Upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, then it says Paul preached to them. It did not say upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to, to hear a sermon. It didn't say that. It said upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread. They came together to break bread, not to hear a sermon from a preacher. Now I'm going to deal with the breaking bread concept now. In Acts um, 20, actually, let me read Acts 20 verse 7 in the Good News Bible. And it says, on Saturday evening, we gathered together for the fellowship meal. Paul spoke to the people and kept on speaking until midnight since he, was, since he was going to leave the next day. Notice, the Good News Bible says, on a Saturday evening, we gathered together for the fellowship meal. Why Saturday evening? Because the days... The day concept is told, was, in the Bible was totally different than the concept of day during our time. Now I'm going to read Acts 2, or starting at verse 41 from the King James, uh, well, the Good News Bible, and it says, Acts 2, 41, Many of them believed this message and were baptized. About 3,000 3, people were added to the group that day. That was when the Holy Spirit fell upon the people at Jerusalem, and the, uh, Peter preached the message. And when he finished preaching that message, 3,000 people gave their hearts to Jesus. Verse 42, they spent their time in learning from the apostles, taking part in the fellowship and sharing in the fellowship meals and prayer. Uh, verse 46, 246, day after day they met as a group in the temple and they had their meals together in their homes, eating with glad and humble hearts, verse 47, praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And every day the Lord added to their group those who were being saved. See, it's clearly saved they fellowship together. They shared in fellowship meals and in prayers. They ate together. Now I'm going to read Jude one twelve. And it talks about false brother in, 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 in the uh, body. And Jews says, with their shameless carousing, they are like dirty spots in your fellowship meals. They take care only of themselves. They are like clouds carried along by the wind, but bringing no rain. They are like trees that bear no fruit, even in autumn. Trees that have been pulled up by the roots and are completely dead. Here Jude is talking about false brethren that come among the assembly and eat with you, but they are not true brothers and sisters in Christ. All they care, all they care about is their stomach. They are false brethren, and you call them spots in your fellowship 
meals. Now, if you really, really get a good understanding about the fellowship meal, you also must read 1 Corinthians 11 chapter, starting at verse 20 to 34. And Paul is telling the Corinthians church, when you come together to have your fellowship meal, don't eat up all the food as soon as you get there. Wait on your other brothers and sisters in Christ who get there laid up, other poor brothers and sisters in Christ who don't have any food to share or have little to share. Don't eat up all the food from them. Wait on your other brothers and sisters in Christ. Be patient. They are your brothers and sisters in Christ, even though they may not have uh, 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 a lot of food to share just like you do. But wait on them because they are also part of the body of Jesus Christ. They were not discerning the body of Christ uh, 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 rightly. Wait on them. Then when they come, that's when you eat together. You share with your poor brothers and sisters in Christ. Don't eat up all the food when you get there. Share with those who, who don't have enough. That's what it's talking about. Now, where did the concept of fellowship meals come from? It came from uh, Jesus Christ. We had a meal with his disciples. In Matthew 26, starting at verse 26 to 30, it says, While they were eating, Jesus took a piece of bread, gave a prayer of thanks, broke it, and gave gave it to his disciples. Take and eat it, he said. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks to God, and gave it to them. Drink it, all of you, he said. This is my blood which seals God's covenant. My blood poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never drink again this wine until the day I drink the new wine with you in my Father's kingdom. And verse 26, 30, chapter 26, 30 says, Then they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. See, Jesus Christ had a meal with them, and from that meal he took a piece of bread, and he took a cup of wine, and he told them the bread, that piece of bread that he took from the meal, they had already eaten and already drank, but he took a piece of that bread from that meal and, and some wine and told them to drink, eat this bread. This symbolizes my body. This symbolizes my body, partake of my body. That was broken for you. That 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 uh, and and take up the the wine, the, the blood that was shared for you. This is my body and my blood. We call that the communion. It was not a cracker and a wafer. It was part of a full meal. This is where the body of Christ uh uh, uh get the uh. Actually, the church is supposed to get eating together. They did not come together in Acts 20, verse 7, to hear a sermon from pastor, a so-called feeding. Many people, many people in the body of Christ have been fooled into thinking they must hear a sermon from pastor. That is their feeding. That is not true. Later, I'm going to do a teaching on what a shepherd really is supposed to do for the body. It is not preaching a sermon to them. It is not preaching a sermon, then getting 10% of their income. It's not uh, bringing sheep into your barn. And when you give them that dry hay, then you open up a book and preach to them. Then you get out your clippers and take 10 of their wool. That is not that is that is completely nonsense. You only shear sheep once a year. Just like tithing, tithing was only once a year. Now I'm gonna deal with the first day of the week. In the uh the good news Bible it says on a Saturday evening we gather together for the fellowship meal. What about the Saturday evening? Actually the, the day concept of day was different than our time. In our time, morning and evening is the first day. But in the biblical times, in Genesis first chapter, it says the evening and the morning was the first day. God created the heaven and earth. It says the evening and the morning was the first day. And God created something else. And it said the evening and the morning was the second day. And God created something else. And it said the evening and the morning was the third day. Now bringing it to our morning terminology, uh, let's say third evening at 6 at sunset, let's call it 6 p.m., Saturday evening, after the sunset, at 6.01, it was called Sunday morning. Now, according to our concept, it's still Saturday, but at sunset, at 6.01, it's, it's Sunday morning. 7 p.m. is Sunday morning. 8, 9 p.m. is, uh, 9 p.m. is Sunday morning. 10, 11 p.m. is Sunday morning. Uh, 12 a.m. is still Sunday morning. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 a.m. is Sunday morning. It does not become Monday until sunset at 6 p.m. Uh, uh, Sunday evening. At 6 or 1, it's considered Monday morning. So the evening and the morning was the first day. The evening and the morning was the second day. 
The first day of the week always started sunset. After sunset, it was the next day. God bless you.